there and welcome back to Cuckoo for Books. I am Salva and today we are going to be talking about the third book in Sarah J. Mass's Throne of Glass series and that is Air of Fire. Woohoo! You can click on my reviews for the first two books in the series over here, my Throne of Glass and my Crown of Midnight review. Let's just get right into it because I have a lot of thoughts about this book. First off, I love the added point of view of Manon, Black Beak. At the end of Crown of Midnight, we learn that the king of Adderland is building something in the fairy and gap, and we don't know what it is. In the third book, we find out that the king has bred these flying dragon-like things. He needed writers, so the king decides to form an alliance with the Iron Teeth Witches and say that in return you can have back your kingdom. Manon Blackbeak, she's one of the fiercest, most dreaded witches ever. We see her point of view while she meets the Wyverns, Weaverns, learns how to train them and ride them and get ready for battle, and I loved it. You know, I love Selena. She is my homegirl. She never say homegirl again, but after reading Air of Fire, oh my gosh, I love Manon even more. I loved reading about her story more. It guts me to say this, but there were times when I was actually, no, 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 get back to Manon's story. I don't really care about Selena. Let, let's read more about the witches, because it's this new culture. The witches have this different society. They live in different hierarchies, and it was so much fun learning about that, learning about the different clans and the rules, and Manon and her 13, and the ranking and training. I wouldn't be surprised if Later on, Sarah J. Mass was just like, let's have a spin-off on the witches. They are so interesting to read about. So in the first two books, there were different points of view, but it was all centered around the castle. Now, the different POVs serve a greater purpose because there's one POV in the Farian Gap with Manon, there's one in Wendlin with Selena training, there's one with Kaol back at home and Dorian, and they're back at in Rifthold and they're dealing with a Fallout and the Growing Rebellion. Selena's finally in Wendlin, and when she finally meets her Aunt Maeve, Aunt Maeve's like, well, you have to show me your powers, show me what you got, and then we'll talk about you and me talking about the weird keys. So Selena undergoes this like karate kid training thing with Rowan, who is also a fairy prince. So they go through this like sensei grasshopper montage where they're training. And he's like, shift, be a fairy. I can't, shift, I can't. Shift now or I'll stab you. I still can't and I don't care if you stab me. I'm glad that Sarah J Mass cut that off really quick because that would have gotten old really quickly. Like, oh, you know those stories where they're trying to delve into their magic and they just can't. And sometimes an author will put it off till the very end and you're like, well, I knew that the hero was capable of doing that this whole time, so there was really no point in dragging it on for the whole of the book. Sarah J Mass thankfully cut it off right at the beginning. Meanwhile, back at Rifthold, Dorian is making a new friend in the form of the healer. So the healer used to be this unnamed person who would come in and heal Dorian, Kaol, and Selena every time they got into one of their tiffs with the dark side. Finally, we get a name for the healer. Her name is Sorsha, and Dorian sort of falls in love with her, and Sorsha has been secretly in love with him the whole time. But, like, the romance between her and Dorian was a bit too contrived. I mean, there was really no, like, development in their relationship. There was no building up. And then, spoiler alert, beep! She dies at the end. She has lived and died within the span of one book. I was hoping at the very end that they would reveal her to be a lead, a lied, one of the other missing children of Terrison didn't, so that was disappointing. We also get to meet Adion, and he is Selena's cousin. They've sort of been each other's best friends growing up, the only person Selena could talk to. I really liked the flashback sequences. There were a lot of flashback sequences for when Selena was a princess back in Terrison. I liked the little interactions, especially the part where Dorian, baby Dorian, meets baby Selena, and Aelin's like, you can, you can be my friend, and Dorian's like, I already have a friend. His name is Kale, and you're just like, Ooh. Also, in Wendlin, there has been a series of murders. So yet another murder mystery that Selena has to uncover, this time with Rowan. And Rowan and Selena are detectives Benson and Stabler from Law & Order SVU. You cannot tell me otherwise. They have the exact same relationship fraternity with each other, but yet you, there could be some romance there, but they never really explicitly state it, but you know they would die for each other and they mean so much to each other and you know there's so much love there, but at the same time they're both too stubborn and they're too 
cold to be like, I love you, man. I also liked the idea of the Karanam. Reminds me a lot of Parabatai from Cassandra Clare's Mortal Instruments series. Okay, so Jason Alec equals Selena and Rowan. Okay, from this point on, we are gonna go really, really, really spoilery in the spoiler area, so if you haven't read the book, you can stop watching right now. The whole burnout sequence when Selena burns out her powers and she's steaming hot, Rowan runs and saves her and takes her to the baths, and you can see afterwards that he, he has burned himself carrying Selena, but he never dropped her once. A part of me hopes that they won't get together, because then you can see that it's possible to have such a deep friendship between a guy and a girl without needing romantic goodnessness. So a part of me kind of hopes they don't get together, ever. You hear that, Sarah J Mass? Ever. Speaking of Sarah J Mass and things I want to tell her, stop skipping parts! So in the first book, in the competition to become the king's champion, she would brush over it and just be like, oh, the second trial was last week. She did the same thing here in this one part where she says that Fae Nobility came to Distward, visited, and then left. Sarah. I want to know about the Fey nobility. Tell me more. What do they act like? How do they react to Selena? What, what do they have powers? What what is their society? See what do they how do they react to the demi fey? Tell me more. Don't just drop it in a sentence and then never tell me what the Fey nobility is like. Tell me. Tell me more. This is also the first book if you realize it was some, it was a realization I had towards the end, particularly at the battle at Mistward. Selena has always fought for herself. She has fought all this time for safety and freedom. Looking out for herself is the only thing she could ever do ever since she lost everything. In Air of Fire, you see her fighting for the first time for other people. It's her for the first time taking that queen role and it was just so beautiful. Rowan was like, we can go to Doranelle right now. You can get your answers from Maeve and then leave. You don't have to be involved in this battle at all. Selena finally lets others in and was like, I'm fighting for all these people who have no one to fight for them. If I don't fight, they're just gonna be massacred. She did it for other people. Character development. This is also such a turning point in the series. You guys know how after Goblet of Fire, there was a clear turning point in tone, in plot. It grew progressively darker and more mature after Goblet of Fire. I feel like Air of Fire was the turning book in this series. It isn't Kaol and Dorian and Selena banding together and trying to look out for themselves. In Air of Fire, kingdoms are involved, lives of other thousands of other people are involved, and the stakes again even though I didn't think it could get any higher, grow way, way higher, like Empire State High. I think this is the book that has elevated the Throne of Glass series from just another YA fantasy to this is it, this is the real deal. Not to say that the first two books weren't good, they were excellent, but Air of Fire was the book that we're here to stay, we're here to be legendary, this is gonna be an epic series. And that's all I have to say about Air of Fire by Sarah J Mass. That is it for today's video. Don't forget to leave a comment below what other book reviews you want me to do. If you guys liked it, go click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at cuckoo for books and I will see you guys next time. Bye!